I quit bullet journaling for junk journaling because decorating to-do lists just wasn't doing it for me anymore. And I know that a lot of you are ex-creative planners and can relate to creative planning being inefficient at some times and also feeling a little stifled from the limitations that that journaling form has. So I wanted to do a couple of things in this video. First, I kind of want to do a flip through of some of my older bullet journals and look at them critically and see what I was doing creatively and how I can adapt that to the way I currently journal, which is through junk journaling style. I will be using materials from Your Creative Studio's April box that they graciously sent me. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Bree, where I share videos to help you develop your personal creative journaling style. And I think it is super important to go through old pages, old art, and look at it through a critical lens to be able to apply to your next projects. That's how you refine your creative voice and come up with some new discoveries and techniques that you can use in your next pages. But before we get into the flip through, let's first backtrack a little bit and do a quick overview of what bullet journaling is and creative planning. So this guy created this book, which suggests that you create personalized calendars, uh, habit trackers, and short little journal entries that look like this. But then artists such as Amanda Rachel Lee took this idea and made it just way prettier. And people in the bullet journaling community don't just doodle in their bullet journals. They also collage and use stickers and ephemera you know, the materials that we're pretty familiar with in junk journaling. Most of us are familiar with bullet journaling. That's like kind of like the big sexy <laughs> community. Um, but there are tons of different creative planning communities such as um, the Happy Planner. You also have Habanichi and Stagology. It's a pretty big rabbit hole that you can go down on in Instagram and just see so many beautiful ways that people uh, organize their lives. It just doesn't work for me. My planning system is super basic. Um, I am constantly changing it. Like I just got a desk calendar that goes week by week. And before that I was kind of doing a hybrid of bullet journaling, but not really within like a, a ledger book, but whatever. That's not what this video is about. But you know, it depends on how I feel that week on how uh, strict I am going to be with my planning. But what I will say is that I no longer use stickers or inks or stamps or anything like that. I just need words on a page with a plan and just try my best to execute it. And throughout this video, I'll go back and forth with saying bullet journal when I really mean creative planning and vice versa. But what essentially I'm trying to drive at is uh, when I say creative planning or bullet journaling, I mean something more like this and not this. So with that little backstory out of the way, let's look at some old pages. So there are three things that I like to consider when I'm looking at old pages. I like to look at page layouts, materials, and content. I believe those three pillars or building blocks are the most important aspects of identifying a person's uh, personal journaling style. So I'm going to be using those three filters to look at and talk about the art in my bullet journals. Content is about the message of your journal entry. It can be expressed through writing or images. I wrote a little message to myself, tucked it in an envelope about things I could do to make my day better if I'm having a rough one. I also made a priority list of things that gave me joy. I'm going to repurpose the content from this page, but update the layout of this page that's more in line with my current style of junk journaling.
Analyzing materials that you've used in the past has many benefits. It can jog your memory about materials that you've forgotten about, or it can inspire you to take a step further and try something different with the materials. I was inspired by the way I used watercolor on this page to create an ombre effect and wanted to see if I could use other techniques to add texture and depth to the paint. When analyzing page layout, you're looking at the ways you've organized the content and materials of the page. I like the asymmetrical balance of this page and layout of the text. In the new journal page, I essentially copied the layout almost exactly but with different materials. So taking a trip down memory lane is always a fun little exercise and I want you to go to your bookshelf right now and pick out an older book, especially if it's different from junk journaling, like it's a completely different form like bullet journaling. Pick the page that really resonates with you. There doesn't have to be a reason why. Use those three filters. Think about what kind of content you wrote on that page. Think about the layout of it and think about the materials and see if there's a way where you can recreate that page from the space that you're in now with all the experience and knowledge that you have and see what happens. This video topic was pulled straight from the comments from my last video. I want to make content that you all enjoy and that will actually benefit you and your creative practice in discovering your artistic voice. So I'm going to ask the same question in this video. Let me know in the comments what part of this video resonated with you, if you have any questions about any concepts, and I'll try my best to make a video that is helpful. If you are interested in learning more prompts or ways of thinking about your creative practice within junk journaling, I do have a playlist um, where I break down kind of the basic steps of uh, how to find your style. With that being said, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.